Hello and welcome to Downtown Boston and Boston's South Station. Today we are going to be riding down to Providence on the MBTA's Providence Line while taking a quick pit stop at Canton Junction to enjoy some Northeast Corridor action. Boston South Station was built back in 1899 as a unified station for the four railway termini around Boston. The station serves as the northern terminus for Amtrak's Northeast Corridor and the larger of the two Boston Terminus stations. Service is provided by Amtrak's Acela, Northeast Regional, and Lakeshore Limited, plus eight of the MBTA's 13 commuter lines. South Station is Amtrak's fifth busiest station and the seventh busiest railway station in North America. In 2019, the station served 1.58 million Amtrak passengers and a total of 28.9 million people between both Amtrak and the MBTA. The station building may be a sight to behold, but unfortunately the inside has certainly seen better days. The elegance of rail travel is almost entirely nullified by the dimly lit station hall with its cracked floor and exposed ductwork across the ceiling. Definitely not the prettiest station on Amtrak's roster. It may have been better if the hall was entirely open, but the way it's set up now feels clustered and haphazardly thrown together, with restaurant stalls every 50 feet. Following the signs around the outer wall, we find the MBTA ticketing office and a few ticket machines. Our ride down to Providence this morning will be a split ride, so we'll purchase a ticket as far as Canton Junction now, and then pick up another later when we continue on to Providence. Tickets between Boston and Providence cost $12.25 for a full ride, while our split journey will cost $8 for the first leg and $5.25 for the second, for a grand total of $13.25, $1 more than a full ride. Ticket in hand, we can head out to the departure board in the center of the station. Our first train of the day will be Stoughton Line Train 873, with an estimated departure time of 12.05 p.m. At around 11.55, the display updated, moving our train to the second spot on the board, informing us that we will be departing on track one. Stepping out onto the platforms, we're met with a ton of construction noise. The space beyond the main building is currently undergoing a major remodel. The South Station bus terminal is expanding out over the north end of the platforms, while a massive tower is being built over the empty concrete between the station building and tracks. Waiting for us on track one is our Stoughton Line train. The Stoughton Line is a branch service of the Providence Line, running the same route as far as Canton Junction before breaking off towards Stoughton. Walking towards the front of the train, we find the only open door and can climb aboard. I wish that the MBTA would open more doors for boarding, but it does help keep passengers in one or two cars, which makes it easier for the conductor to check tickets and keep an eye on everything. Normally on bi-level coaches, I sit upstairs, but I figured I would change it up a bit and headed downstairs to find a seat. MBTA's bi-level fleet includes plenty of bench seating in a 2x3 arrangement, with two tables in the center of each level for larger groups. The table seats allow around 4 inches between my knees and the table, with ample space between the two rows to stretch out or accommodate passengers sitting across from one another. The table is tapered towards the aisle, which makes it easier to get in and out of the rows. The seats themselves are the typical commuter rail bench seats. The upholstery is decent and comfortable enough for longer journeys, but the lack of separation is again the flaw in their design. Luggage racks are available on each side of the train, although the rack on the three side of the train is quite difficult to reach from the aisle. Departure from South Station is right on time, with our train rolling onto the beginning of the Northeast Corridor. Our first stop comes a few minutes after departing South Station. Boston Back Bay is the third major station serving the Boston metro area. It's a little weird sitting on the lower level of these bi-level coaches, as the platform ends up being right at eye level. We picked up a few passengers and carried on. Leaving the Boston metro area behind, we pick up speed down the corridor.
The bathroom on today's train is located at the front of our coach. All bathrooms on the MBTA are accessible, so there's never any worry about accessibility or ease of use. The bathroom is definitely on the nicer side of commuter rail facilities. All of the counters and fixtures are clean and appear to be in good working order. The sink works well, although there wasn't any soap, instead replaced by a hand sanitizer dispenser. The paper towels were full, although they were a bit stuck in the dispenser, with two full rolls of toilet paper below. The usual 120 volt outlet is on the far left side of the vanity and was working well. Overall, the bathroom was quite nice, especially for a commuter rail facility. Canton Junction is fast approaching, and coming into the station, our train splits off onto the Stoughton Line tracks and its curved platform. Only a few people get off the train here, and Stoughton Line Train 873 continues on down the line. Canton Junction is a small station on the northwest side of Canton proper. Station facilities are limited, but do include a nice station building with a coffee shop inside. I think my least favorite aspect of this station are the insanely long ramps to get up and over the tracks. I understand that they have to be both tall enough to clear the catenary wires of the corridor and be ADA compliant, but still, stairs would have been a nice addition. Of course, we're not here for the station itself or its facilities. We're here for the railway. First up is southbound Providence Line number 815, operated by MPI HSP 46 locomotive number 2031, with five bi-level coaches in tow. It's a quick stop before the mighty diesel powers up and out of Canton Junction. Northbound train 820 next graces our presence, and we're greeted by a friendly horn and a wave from the driver. Train 820 is running a combination of bi-levels and Comet coaches today, with Locomotive 2004 on the rear. The next train around the bend is what we've been waiting for. Northbound Acela 2152 makes her way up the corridor, flying past at close to 100 miles an hour. Almost immediately after, Acela 2167's headlights show up in the distance, the train flying by a few minutes later.
With the return of our outbound train on the Stoughton Line tracks, it's time to head over to the southbound platform to continue our ride to Providence. We do get one last arrival before we leave. Train 875 crosses onto the northbound track just before the Spalding Street Bridge before switching onto the Stoughton Branch Line. Before we continue our journey south, why not hit that subscribe button? It's totally free, and it really helps support the channel. And drop the video a like too if you're enjoying the journey. Train 817 is our ride down to Providence. Led by MPI HSP 46 number 2012, 817 pulls into Canton Junction about a minute behind schedule. The rear door on the last single level coach slides open and we can climb aboard. Getting seated, our train pulls away from Canton Junction, continuing our ride down south. Seats on the MBTA's Comet coaches are similar to the rest of their fleet, and virtually identical to any other Comet family coach of the same era. Each row provides a measly 1.5 to 2 inches of legroom, with almost no space beneath the next seat for personal belongings. These older coaches are certainly lacking in the amenity department, with no armrests, tables, or outlets of any kind. Above each side of the train, passengers will find the usual luggage racks and coat hooks. Overall, pretty standard commuter rail stuff. Continuing on towards Providence, our train picks up speed, peaking at 80 miles an hour along the Northeast Corridor. Unfortunately, despite running on the electrified Northeast Corridor, MBTA operates a fleet of diesel locomotives. Most of the MBTA's commuter lines do not include electrification, and as such, their fleet has to accommodate. But things are finally beginning to change, and potentially for the better. In 2021, the MBTA began planning the use of electric multiple units on Providence Line trains, with an estimated in-service date of 2024. This would be followed by the electrification of the Fairmount Line and the inner portion of the Newburyport-Rockport Line in the late 2020s. Plans shifted again in 2022, with the MBTA now indicating their interest in battery electric multiple units instead of full EMUs. This would reduce the length of overhead catenary installation required across the network, avoid reconstruction of overhead bridges, and remove electrical load from poor existing power grids on branch lines. A pilot electric service on the Providence line is expected to begin sometime in 2024 with leased Amtrak ACS-64 locomotives. Full service is expected sometime between 2028 and 29, with the final goal being full electrification by 2050. Despite the long timeline, it's still a massive step forward for regional rail in and around Boston, and hopefully everything moves forward in the coming years. MBTA's Providence layover facility is the first sign that we're reaching our destination, our train slowing for its final stretch into Rhode Island's state capital. The tracks dip down into the channel beneath downtown, our train coming to a stop on Platform 1. Grabbing our belongings, we can make our way off the train and out into Providence. As we make our way up the escalators and into Providence Station, we can bring today's video to a close. I know this video was a bit different, being a segmented journey with a bit of rail fanning in the middle, but if you enjoyed a greater emphasis on railway action, then I'll be sure to include more in the future. Next week, we'll be back in NYC for a ride on the jet, a first-class bus service from New York City to Washington, D.C. And when I say first-class, I mean first-class. This service is truly something special, so be sure to stick around for when that goes live. Also this Wednesday, we'll hop back over to the Netherlands for a quick ride on one of NS's VIRMs from Ede Wageningen to Arnhem. If you're new around here, then why not hit that subscribe button? It's totally free, and it really helps support the channel. As always, I want to give a huge shout-out and thank you to my patrons and channel members. 
If you too want your name in the video, or just want to support the channel in more ways than one, then head on over to the links in the description below. But anyways, that's all I have for today. Thanks for riding with me, and I'll see you in the next one.